Okay guys, well, I thought I'd do another update because we have had quite a bit of energy disturbance and we've pretty much been in storm for at least 24 hours and we're now going into another 24 hours and we're back in storm. So we can imagine that this is going to play out in the environment but on all the causal planes too. So expect that the political fuckery will also increase. And it's also interesting because we're seeing this geomagnetic storm, but we've got the X-ray flux actually flatlining, and I have seen this occur quite regularly when you have gamma ray bursts. And we've actually just had four gamma ray bursts. And these gamma ray bursts come in on the coronal wind stream. And when there's less X-ray flux, we have more of this gamma ray goodness actually permeating in with the coronal wind. And so, yeah, we've just had four in four days. We've had one in the Sagittarius region on the 31st of January. And then on the 1st of February, we've had one from Sculptor. And then we've had one from Fornax on the 2nd of February. And then on the 3rd, we've had Monoceros. So we're definitely seeing more energy and this is going to influence all of the environment on all of the causal planes. But we can also see this energy exchange between us and our sun playing out in the environment now because we have more wind storms coming to Chicago. There's been another state of emergency called and they're saying that they could have about a foot of snow. So we are seeing these extreme events continue and we will see these extremes in both the cold and the hot. So we will see continued fires in the southern hemisphere we will see continued heat waves in the southern hemisphere and we will see continued cold snaps and polar vortexes in the northern hemisphere and this will continue happening until we find this medium ground because at the moment it's like we're swinging between the two extremes and then once we find this middle ground between the two extremes, we will actually move towards a cooling because on average we are moving towards a cooling and over the last 15 years that has shown that we are in a hiatus when it comes to the temperature and you've measured it over a long period of time. And so we'll continue to see these events so I hope you guys are pretty prepared over there and I'm sure most of you are because you do know that you deal with these events but just know they are going to happen more often and they will be more severe and you may even get one of these really severe polar vortexes that are just going to snap freeze everything they touch. If all of the conditions are right you may even have to deal with something that is as severe as one of those events. This is something you have to factor into where we are going as we move into a more colder time on this planet. And we are going to see extreme weather increase everywhere, not only in the Northern Hemisphere, but even in the Southern Hemisphere, we're going to see more cyclones and more of those events too, more earthquakes and probably dealing with a lot more volcanic activity as the volcanic activity continues to increase because we are near the Ring of Fire down, you know, around the Southern Hemisphere too. We have to factor that in. And... We've seen that Etna has also had another eruption for the first time in over a year, an intense eruption. So we're seeing the volcanoes waking up again. The giants are waking up. Now we've got Etna erupting and lava flowing. We've also got changes over in Hawaii. We're seeing this phenomenon known as Pelly's hair or lava glass and it's this beautiful gold lava glass and this is a phenomenon that happens with the volcanoes. 
so connected to the ancient mythology, connected to the esoteric information. I think it's something that we have to pay attention to when we're looking at all this information to have an understanding of where we are in the cycle. Because remember, this is what Rome has locked up underneath the Vatican, all of this information about the mythology and what it really was actually explaining to modern man, not the mythology in the way that they have actually tried to interpret it. They are actually interpreting it in a very infantile way when it is actually a symbolic language and so to me when this is relating to the goddess of volcanoes then I think it is a phenomenon that we should be actually paying attention to when it's happening with all of these other changes that we're seeing. Now finally I just wanted to bring you this article from the Daily Fail, at it again, trying to actually discredit the photographs of the nebula. Now, I'm not to say that NASA isn't over-exaggerating the technology and their actual achievements, but with these, type, with these types of photos, you do have to actually pull the nebula out of them because they aren't actually viewable by, by the human eye, okay? They have to be brought out so the human eye can see them on the wavelengths, the colour wavelengths that we use to see images. So they actually use this process to bring out their um, nebula. However, the nebula have to actually be there to actually be brought out. So even though they're starting off with these very plain images and sometimes as you'll see in this video you can barely even see them they do have to be there in the first place to actually be brought out so what they're basically doing is just using tools to bring out the nebula in a way that the human eye can see so they're just changing the contrast and the saturation of the colors to allow us to actually see the nebula because it's not actually viewable with the human eyes. So they're actually trying to discredit these photos because they do use these processes. So we can see these nebula in all of their beauty and all of their glory. But really what they're doing is showing this is really all they can see with their telescopes. That, you know? And then they do have to use these processes to bring out what's there, the beauty that already lies there waiting to be discovered. But it does just go to show you once again that mankind aren't as technically advanced as they think they are and as the establishment and NASA have actually tried to appear. Because when you actually look at their technology as opposed to Hollywood and Star Trek, it does not actually logically equate. You cannot call what NASA currently uses to access the outer realms of space to be anything on par with what they have in Hollywood. So this is where people have to actually come to an understanding that there has been this real, you know, um, use of Hollywood to shape the perception of mankind, okay? And make us think that we can conquer space and we can conquer the creator and we can conquer the elements and we can conquer Mother Earth and we can conquer anything. And it's just that we are in a time of the cycle where it does give mankind that belief based on the appearance, but it really isn't how it is in the larger scheme of things. Mankind are really the frog at the bottom of the well still. They haven't come to the top of the well and seen their place in the larger scheme of things, which is quite also one of importance and one um, that is something everyone should be humbled by. But a lot of people understand that it comes with great responsibility to be a partaker of creation. So that's also where people like to actually believe the Hollywood version rather than just see that there is another version which actually the science is showing 
and it's one that shows that mankind access these areas only in certain times of the cycle and when they're in a heightened state of consciousness, which they are not now. So they only have the dreams of what they can ever achieve. They'll never be up actually able to achieve it other than when they use Hollywood. So that's just what people have to understand. And so you have to see this in the correct context that yes, the nebula are already there to be brought out. The beauty is already there waiting to be discovered. It's just that our eyes cannot see it. We can only see a certain amount of wavelengths of light. Okay? And we have to actually use these tools to see what is already there. But it's already there. So yes, it is an honest image. It is an honest image. It's just that the human eye cannot see the beauty of what is already there. But, as I said, also shows where NASA's technology is at. Okay? When everyone thinks they're so advanced, well, you know, mankind has to know their place. They do have a important place in the scheme of things but it's in the order of things too and they are not at the top gods of everything where they can just destroy what they want and go and colonize another planet which is what they want to brainwash everybody into believing and that is not the truth and that is not what the information shows or the science shows so, anyway, I will put that underneath and you can check that out for yourself. thought that was quite interesting. And, yeah, just don't buy the bullshit of Daily Fail trying to discredit it and Daily Fail being just the bullshit that the hive minds feast on. And so you do have to take the information and then actually pick through it to get the facts and not be shaped in the opinion that they're trying to give you where most people would see that this might be questionable, this image, because they haven't actually understood that the image is already there to be found and you're just actually bringing it out for the human eye to see. This is how they work. All right, well, as I said, I'll put everything underneath, guys, and um, you can check that out for yourself. And as always, peace out.